Funding for this program was provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the financial support of viewers like you. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. Hi! Look what I found. I once did more than 500 paddles in a row. Then the band broke and the ball came off. It turned up later, though, disguised as a meatball in my Aunt Lily's spaghetti. Oh, here are two more of these. Why don't you try it? How do you play with this? It's all in the wrists. Or maybe it's the neck. Could be the arms. Sticking out your tongue helps. Now you got it. Hello, I'm Stacy Jones. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm Jake Scoop, uh, the new ace reporter for the Indian Valley Gazette. The newspaper that's as old as the hills, but new every day. Mm. And I have a feeling that uh, the big story is going to happen here today. The big story? Yeah, yeah. Something is going to happen here today that everyone is going to want to read about, and I'm going to write it. The big story. Like a train robbery. What? Anybody try to rob the train today? Oh, good heavens, no. no. Hey, mister, look what I can do. Kid hits rubber ball with paddle. No, I don't think so, Sonny. Uh, I'm looking for the big story. What's the big story? Well, it's, it's that something extra that makes a story special, makes it alive and exciting. Or sometimes it's just something that people didn't know about. Like yeah. Mr. Conductor? Yeah. Who's Mr. Conductor? He's a little man playing paddle ball in that box over there. A little man? How little? This big. <laughs> that big, huh? <laughs> Let me set you straight here, Sonny. Uh, little men, they're about, say, this big. Okay? A man who's this big is called a baby. Are you telling me there is a baby over in that box playing paddle ball? No. <laughs> no. I didn't think so. <sighs> Maybe I was wrong about finding a story here. Maybe this is just a train station with nothing going on. Kevin? Billy Two Feathers! <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long time. Stacy, Dad, Carol, I want you to meet somebody. This is Kevin Knowles, better known as Amazo, the great, the world famous magician. Wow. This is Stacy Jones. Oh, Very to meet nice you. to meet and you. And this is Dan, and this is Kara. Can you show us some magic? Well, I don't know. Oh, the kids would just love it, please. I'm just passing through. I've had a long journey, and I'm still a long way from home. Oh, please. Oh. Well. All right. Oh. <laughs> now you stay right there. I present to you the famous Chinese linking rings. Now, as you can see, these rings are solid and separate. But just by counting to three, we can cause these rings to magically link together. Count with me. One, two, three. <sighs> Let's try it once more. One, two, three. Three! <laughs> He's awful. That's enough now, Ken. Let, let, let's go show you around the station. That wasn't very nice to laugh at him. He couldn't do any magic. Well, haven't you ever tried to do something and then you failed at it? Huh? Yeah? Yeah. Well, did anybody laugh at you for failing? Yeah, I hated it, but he's a grown-up. Sure, well, that doesn't change things. Grown-ups can have their feelings hurt, too. I mean, just because you grow up, it doesn't mean you leave your feelings behind. Hmm? I think we have one down dude up there. Well, let's get him back on the right track, Jack. <laughs> okay, it's time for us to spin our own brand of magic. 
and a one and a two and a one, two, three. I'm riding on this train. I've got tears in my eyes. Trying to read a letter from my home. If this train runs me right. I'll be home by Saturday night Cause I'm 900 miles from my home mm. Well, the train I ride on Is a hundred coaches long You can hear the whistle blow A hundred miles And the lonesome whistle call Is the mournfulest of all Cause I'm 900 miles from my home and I hate to hear that lonesome whistle blow It's that long, lonesome train of whistling down I'm scared, Billy. I can't do the magic anymore. Ever since I made a mistake on stage and the audience laughed at me. And now every time I face an audience, I'm afraid they're gonna laugh at me again. Just like those children laughed at me. The people were making you nervous. Yeah. Maybe you tried too hard. Hey. <laughs> Maybe it's easier than you think. How did you do that? You taught me, remember? Hi, Becky. Hi, Becky. Well, 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 what are we all so happy about? We heard a magician's feelings. I don't believe in that stuff. We don't believe magicians have feelings? No, I don't believe in magicians. It's all stupid, funny tricks. You don't believe in magic? I don't believe in magic. You don't believe in magic? I just said I didn't. Wait, how did you do that? Do what? Just say I don't believe in magic in a different voice without moving your lips. She didn't say it. I did. Are you positive you don't believe in magic? Who said that? I did. And I can tell you one or two things about magic that are quite real. Cut it out, you two. You're scaring me. We aren't doing anything. Nothing to be scared of, Becky. Are you sure you don't believe in magic? It's a little man. It's Mr. Conductor. Wait a second. Me? How does a doll like that run? On batteries? Stop it! I don't come with batteries. Yikes, it's a real little man. We've been telling you it's Mr. Conductor. Now do you believe in magic? I do, I do, I do. It's nice to make your acquaintance, Becky. Are you a magician? No. I am who I am, and who I am is who I'll be, you see? But there is a magician here. He's not very good. Now, hold on. Don't start giving up on people because they slip up now and then. If we did that, what would have happened to old Edward? Who's Edward? A train engine. You're absolutely right, a little blue engine. Now I suppose I'll have to tell you about him. Well, what are we waiting for? I'll tell you a story about old Iron Edward. One day, James had to wait at the station till Edward and his train came in. This made him cross. Late again! Edward laughed and James fumed away. After James had finished his work, he went back to the yard and puffed onto the turntable. He 
was still feeling very bad-tempered. Edward is impossible, he grumbled to the others. He clanks about like a lot of old iron, and he is so slow, he makes us wait. Thomas and Percy were indignant. Old iron? Slow? Why, Edward could beat you in a race any day. Really, said James. I should like to see him do it. Next morning, James's driver was suddenly taken ill. He could hardly stand, so the fireman uncoupled James ready for shunting. James was impatient. Suddenly, the signalman shouted. There was James puffing away down the line. All traffic halted, called the signalman. Then he told the fireman what had happened. Two boys were on James's footplate fiddling with the controls. Phew. They tumbled off and ran when James started. The signalman answered the telephone. Yes? He's here. Right. I'll tell him. The inspector's coming at once. He wants a shunter's pole and a coil of wire rope. What for? wondered the fireman. Search me, but you'd better get them quickly. The fireman was ready when Edward arrived. The inspector saw the pole and the rope. Good man, jump in. We'll catch him, we'll catch him, puffed Edward. James was laughing. What a lark, what a lark, he chuckled to himself. Suddenly, he was going faster and faster. He realized that he had no driver. What shall I do? I can't stop. Help! Help! We're coming. We're coming, called Edward. Edward was panting up behind with every ounce of steam he had. At last, he caught up with James. Steady, Edward, called his driver. The inspector stood on Edward's front, holding a noose of rope in the crook of the shunter's pole. He was trying to slip it over James's buffer. The engine swayed and lurched. At last, got him, he shouted. He pulled the noose tight. Gently braking, Edward's driver checked the engine speed, and James's fireman scrambled across and took control. So, the old iron caught you after all, chuckled Edward. I'm sorry, whispered James. Thank you for saving me. You were splendid, Edward. That's all right, replied Edward. The engines arrived at the station side by side. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. A fine piece of work, he said. James, you can rest and then take your train. I'm proud of you, Edward. You shall go to the works and have your worn parts mended. Oh, thank you, sir, said Edward. It'll be lovely not to clank. So you new timers, just remember, don't sell us old timers short. We still have a lot of tricks up our sleeves. Wow. Billy said that Mr. Amazo was a great magician. Maybe he was just tired. Look, it's that reporter looking for a big story. Hey, mister, if you're still looking for a big story, you should know a great magician's visiting here. Oh, yeah? Who's that? Mr. Amazo, right there. Hey, Amazo the Great. I've heard of you. You were traveling all over the world. So why are you back here? Something go wrong? Well, uh... Nothing went wrong. He's the greatest. You should see him. I'd like to see him do a few tricks. Say, how about putting on a little show for the town folks? Uh, I've been traveling for a long time. I'm not really uh, ready. What's the matter, a little stage fright? He's not afraid. He'll put on the best show you've ever seen. He can make the impossible happen, can't you? Well, good. 
I'll spread the word. I can see the headline on the front page now. Magic happenings at Shining Time Station. <laughs> you know, mister, you could be the big story. Hey, be careful there. That's my special bag of tricks. We're sorry. We were just looking. Could you teach us a trick? Teach you a trick, huh? All right. Watch this. Dan, may I borrow you? Stand right there. Now, what color is this wonderful silk hanky? Red. Red. And what color is the sky? Blue. Blue. Right you are, sir. And what color was this silk hanky? Red. Red. Right you are. Now, if you look right there, you can see how it's done. Uh-huh. Now, if you sit down and practice that, I'll see you kids later. <laughs> Mr. Conductor, could you do us a big favor? What would that be? Well, if Mr. Magic sort of messes up his act, could you help him with some of your own magic? Becky, I'm surprised at you. Have faith in him. If you believe he can do it, he can do it. Remember what happened to Edward? The train engine? Exactly. If you believe in somebody, believe in them all the way. I want to hear another story about Edward. Well, it just so happens I have one. <laughs> Bertie the bus was giving some visitors a tour of the island of Soda. It was their last afternoon, and Edward was preparing to take them to meet Bill and Ben. He found it hard to start the heavy train. Did you see him straining? asked Henry. Positively painful, remarked James. Just pathetic, grunted Gordon. He should give up and be preserved before it's too late. Shut up, burst out Duck. You're all jealous. Edward's better than any of you. You're right, Duck, said Boko. Edward's old, but he'll surprise us all. I've done it. We're off. I've done it. We're off, said Edward, as he finally puffed out of the station. Bill and Ben were delighted to see the visitors. They loved being photographed. Later, they took the party to the China Clay Works in a break van special. Everyone had a splendid time, and the visitors were most impressed. Then Edward took the visitors home. On the way, the weather changed. Wind and rain buffeted Edward. His sanding gear failed, and his fireman rode in front, dropping sand on the rails by hand. Suddenly, Edward's wheels slipped fiercely, and with a shrieking crack, something broke. The crew inspected the damage. Repairs took some time. One of your crank pins broke, Edward, said his driver. We've taken your side rods off. Now you're like an old-fashioned engine. Can you get these people home? They must start back tonight. I'll try, sir, promised Edward. Edward puffed and pulled his hardest, but his wheels kept slipping, and he could not start the heavy train. The passengers were anxious. The driver, fireman, and conductor went along the train, making adjustments between the coaches. We've loosened the couplings, Edward. Now you can pick up your coaches one by one, just as you do with freight cars. That'll be much easier, said Edward. Come on, he puffed and moved cautiously forward. The first coach moving helped to start the second, and the second helped the third. I've 
done it! I've done it! Puffed Edward. Steady, boy, warned his driver. Well done, boy! You've got them! You've got them! And he listened happily to Edward's steady beat as he forged slowly but surely ahead. At last, battered, weary, but unbeaten, Edward steamed in. Henry was waiting for the visitors with the special train. Beep! Beep! Sir Topham Hatt angrily pointed to the clock, but excited passengers cheered and thanked Edward, his driver and fireman. Duck and Boko saw to it that Edward was left in peace. Gordon and James remained respectfully silent. That's good for Edward, but what about Amazo the Grades? Yeah, Mr. Conductor, I still think he needs your help. He needs your help more than he needs mine. But can't you give him just a little magic? He has enough magic inside himself if you just believe in him. Oh, are you here to report on the show? Ace reporter covers event. I have a feeling this guy's gonna fall flat in his face. It'll be a sad story, but someone's gotta write it. You know, a big part of magic is wanting to believe in it. Do you believe in magic, Mr. Scoop? No, I only believe in what I see. Well, then, you'd better watch, because the show is about to begin. Mr. Conductor's in here, ready to help out, just in case Amazo the Great can't do his magic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, settle down, settle down, and welcome to Shining Time Station's one and only Showtime Extravaganza. Hello, everyone, I'm Schemer, and I'm your host with the most. I don't like to boast, but I'm better than toast. Hey, listen, pal, uh, you getting all this? If I'm moving too fast for you, let me know, huh? All right. The scheme master right here uh, would like to uh, tell you a little comic riddle. It's a, <laughs> it's a killer. Okay. Hey, all right, listen, here it is. Okay. <laughs> I love this. What is green? Green. Has six legs. Legs. And if it drops out of a tree onto your head, it'll squish you like a bug. <laughs> okay. Nobody can guess. I'll have to tell you then. I know a pool table. Oh, very good. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Miss Smarty Pants Know-It-All. Yeah, what? Did she win anything? No, this isn't a game show. I'm not giving away money. I'm trying to do some jokes here. Come on, people, sit up straight, pay attention, and let's start to laugh at Schemer. Come on, come on, come on. I'm working hard up here. I think they're ready for some real magic. I'm not ready, Billy. I can't do this. But you have a gift to share with people. The gift of magic. When you perform, you make people believe in magic. They believe in you. I can see it in their faces. Don't think about your audience. Concentrate on your magic. It's your gift. Hey, it's about time you showed up. I can't carry this show all by myself. As much as my adoring fans would like me to. <laughs> anyway, without much further ado, here he is, the great Amazo. Thank you for teaching us that magic before. Oh, it was just a simple trick. No one has ever taught us anything like that before. I think you can do real magic. Just in case Amazo the Great can't do his magic, Mr. Conductor can. Oh, no, it's empty. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you this evening a few tricks using only my hands and some simple props. The first is the famous Chinese rings. Now, as you can see, these rings are solid and separate. And simply by counting to three, one ring will penetrate through the other. Count with me. One. One. Two, three, yay! The Chinese rings. 
And yet these rings can come apart just like rings of smoke. Oh. Chinese ring. enough to be at Shining Time Station yesterday evening were treated to the rare talents of a world-class magician. You see, you believed in him, and it helped him to believe in himself. I hear he's doing a show over at Lucy's Leap tonight. Everybody's going to give him a big welcome when he does his show. Mm -hmm. uh, did, uh, did they mention anybody else in the article? Did they mention so. anybody else? Uh, wait, let's see. Oh, yeah. An otherwise perfect evening was almost ruined by a snarly man who yelled at us to be quiet and kept wanting us to give him money. I wonder who they're talking about. <laughs> what? Ah, oh, Schemer, this will make you feel better. <gasps> you just got money out of my ear. Well, hey, hey, go get some more money, Billy. Get some more money out of there. But uh, remember, all that money that you find is mine, huh? Got their scheme? Blue. Look at this. Whoa. 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 Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the word. Reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun To a shining time station Where dreams can come true Waiting there for you So much to see, so far to travel So much to learn to know Friends by your side Hopes to hold on to, who knows how far you'll go. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true. Your own imagination waiting there for you. Funding for this program was provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the financial support of viewers like you. This is PBS.